the recording. So welcome everybody um, to our inaugural reading group on the Economic Space Agency uh, economic paper. Uh, and that is entitled The Grammar of Economic Space Agency, Post-Capitalist Economic, Economic Organizational Expression. Uh, my name is Joel Mason. I'm technical writer and chief of staff at EXA Labs, a consulting wing of EXA. And I'm gonna be facilitating today. So nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you for all that are watching uh, later on on YouTube or whatever devices you like. Um, so, so yeah, we've got with us uh, folks from Economic Space Agency team. And we just want to, we don't exactly know how we want to read this paper. It's been such an amazing uh, labor. Um, and here comes Jesse. Um, such an amazing labor by so many of you. And we've all kind of read versions. And, and so, I mean, it's, it's been like how many years in the works now, this paper, would you say? I would say three three year, three year, years, years, at least, at least four, mm -hmm. maybe, okay, because <laughs> that's right. Maybe, yeah, we, in fact, 2019, we were already like presenting the first drafts. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, so it's been on the go for a, a while um, and it's it's seen many kind of iterations and at a certain point started to kind of, it was kind of amazing to see for anybody who does stuff around generative literature, uh, that over the years it started to like it started to change less and less in a way, you know, uh, mm. and it started to change more and more in another way. Um, so there we go. And there's Pablo. Hi, Pablo. Awesome. Just getting going. So yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's nice to kind of get a little sense of of kind of who we're hearing from, even though I think most people here know everybody. Um, but so I know that you were saying you didn't want to do introductions, but I think it'd be nice just to just for people just to kind of say their names and, and where they hail from, like you guys, where you kind of come from in the conceptual um, metaverse that we're creating. Um, yeah, Dick, do you want to start? We can just wheel it around real quick. Yeah, I mean, re really quickly, I, I've, I've been working in, uh, uh, in, in EXA for what, five, six years, uh, having been a, an academic and you know, publishing in the area of political economy and economic thought, uh, got to this domain and, and the fast and loose discussions of, uh, of the crypto world, the massive imaginations that, that, that got brought into being. I'm, it's just been a buzz all the way. I've had, it's been the most exciting time of my intellectual life uh, because it's just opened imaginations and it's just been thrilling for me. And this is a partial product of, of, of that excitement and hard work. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. What are you, Sally? Yeah, so, so like, like Dick, I'm also a political economist. I'm, my name is Akseli, Akseli Irtanen. Um, and like you were saying, Joel, the Kind of the, it's a good, really good point that the paper actually, it's not just a paper or on like a like a manuscript like it appears at the moment, but it really has been a like a development platform for for our thinking, and and for me, uh, yeah, kind of a political economist, um, and uh, if if I've learned something through my my years of studying and 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 thinking about economy, it is that it actually has a history. Uh, things have not always worked in a way that they they we think that they work now, uh, and it also means that it has a future, and that's kind of a, what excites me quite a lot that we are at the moment able to take part in this 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 moment where we can actually start to re-engineer some of the protocols how the economy works and what it is what is what is value, and that yeah. that's maybe maybe that's cool. my perspective here. That, that's cool. So like it was different before, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be different again and we can be part of that or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Jonathan? Hi, um, John, Jonathan, depending on you know who's talking. Um, Johnny? I'm, I'm oh, no. <laughs> not, uh, not, not, not. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, I'm a media theorist and academic. I'm a professor at um, Pratt Institute. And um, what can I say about my background that's relevant here? Well, I mean, increasingly all of it, I guess. But, um, you know, as somebody who started out thinking about literature and recognized that um, even though I was interested in literature and politics, uh, the image had changed the role of literature. I sort of, my career and my thinking have moved me through various media forms. So from the literary to the cinematic, to the photographic, to the, to the videographic, and to the computational, all of which I engaged in as a, sort of a theorist and critic um, in relationship to political economy. Mm -hmm. But the connection to exit is the um, possibility to take um, media by the horns, as it were, remake the pro protocols and actually change the access um, to its uh, functionality so that we, rather than thinking about broadcast um, from a centralized uh, place, we can actually begin to remediate our own sociality. And mm -hmm. um, that's that's sort of like, you know, in a nutshell, the movement of my my thinking where I mean, obviously literature was a kind of intervention in that space. But, um, you know, now with fi the financialization of media, um, if we can't actually program um, the social, uh, then we're lost. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. Thank you. How are you, Jorge? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Jorge and uh, I'm a software engineer and I've been tasked uh, with the, with the uh, um, framing of our work as a formal network um, and therefore as, an, as, a, as, a, as a communications uh, um, medium and a protocol. So um, mm -hmm. that includes uh, the, the, the encoding as financial instruments and as uh, just messaging across agents and um, to change accounting artifacts, right? So I would, I would just say like uh, my job is to ground uh, everything into into a formalism that computers can understand. Therefore, can mm -hmm. we can we can uh, use computation medium to enable uh, all these all these ideas uh, to be implementable. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. That's I'm happy to answer the questions for regards to that too. That's great, and I, you always always had such a gift for being able to like, kind of like distill things like that. You just did there, so that's it. It's good to know you still got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah, I mean, I thought I might uh, share the screen of the table of contents because I, you know, as, a, as someone who is also has a past in literature, a shady literature past, um, I just find this uh, exciting. Table of contents always excite. So it's mm -hmm. here, you can see it. Is there anything you guys want to, say about the overall um, structure of the thing, like we're gonna talk about the introduction today, but mm -hmm. is there anything you wanna say about we're here looking at the whole heft of the thing? Yeah, I think you're muted. I, I will use the, the opportunity to, uh, just to repeat that really this, the, the, the paper, it has been a, like a, a development platform for us, like where we, we've been working together to actually to distill the distill the, the gold in a sense. And it has not been easy always, uh, but mm -hmm. we've also learned that it's it's in this, in this, in this like a massaging of the differences, sometimes even conflicts and and where the gold is. And some of the mm -hmm. I, I also think that it's it's a it's a it's a it's a serious like a effort in, in taking economics into information era serious effort mm -hmm. in, in opening economics into, into politics in a way that it situates the what we are trying to do, what's our proposal into the history of economic thinking and, and to the future of that. So maybe, maybe that I'll, I would I'll like to say. Gonna, I, was, I was just going to add something that, that is very similar to that, but from a slightly different angle. But, but when, when, when you hear us, the, those of us in, inside Exa describing our backgrounds, you'd immediately say, oh, <laughs> some of these don't have very big points of, of, of intersection, um, you know, and, and, and part of what makes me really proud about this document is, and, and the learning experiences that I, I've had, is having to be locked in a room with people who you don't think like and say, 
in pursuing a practical task, a deeply practical task, but, but pursuing it at an abstract level, you have to sort of know exactly what you think about what you value. You can't, you can't fluff your way through any of this. You've got to be able to, to reconcile it so that these things don't just touch these different sets of ideas. They can actually splice into each other. And I think, you know, that, that's both been the struggle, but, but it's also been, for me, the, the, the great achievement of, 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 of this document that we can bring all these different strands together. And I'd like to think quite effectively. Yeah, I, I'll add one more thing is that also that, at least for me, it's also, it has been a really great pleasure to understand uh, what I don't understand. And kind mm. of, a, uh, I, I think we've all, needed to, to face those moments because we are, all of us have entered into this actually a, a little uncertain, unknown territory uh, mm -hmm. to, and uh, I'm really proud of the, of the, of the team uh, that we were able to have the courage to get there and kind of uh, figure out together, like, like um, at least some parts it's, 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 I think still feel it's unfinished and we haven't figured everything out. That's for mm -hmm. sure. But at least, that's a pretty good start uh, um, now. Uh, yeah, look, the, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go on. I just, I, I was going to say, just turn, turning to the table of contents, so as you, you see how the, the, the argument unfolds, it's, it, it's an attempt to build, we have here an attempt to build all dimensions of an economy because we wanted to have something that would be, that has the capacity to be self-sustaining and where we could measure value. Uh, yeah. the, the main concern was that we didn't just talk big about, oh, we, we, we want to do something broad and, 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 and do economics. Uh, we had to be able to ensure that we had mechanisms that would make this system self-sustaining. So it wasn't ever going to start to look like a Ponzi scheme that, oh, it's a bit interesting, but hey, it just needs new, <laughs> new money throwing in every three months to keep it going. That, that was quite a challenge uh, to, to, to build it in that direction. The other little thing to say was, but we can, we'll talk a lot more about this as we go, that ledgers are about exchanges and recording exchanges of, of, of ownership. But we wanted to talk about production and production isn't exchange, or at least mm. it's trivialised if you just see it as the exchange. So that also was a big intellectual battle for us to say, how do we talk about producing outputs and also mm. put it on the grid of a ledger that wants to record changes of ownership? How do you reconcile those two? That, that, was, that was, I think, a really big achievement. And the structure of the paper shows uh, how we've handled that. And maybe one more thing to say about that is, you know, the, I think the, the, another key insight here is that production is also expression, um, and that, mm -hmm. uh, and that um, the way in which capitalism has organized production is that there's a kind of the limiting of the capacity for expression to the qualities of expression to persist when the bottom line is always the existing value form, and sort of seeing the the world of makers um, as trying to express something more than simply um, value. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also a way of understanding the, um, the the abiding disaffection people have with um, the logic of a capitalist system, which depends upon extraction mm -hmm. and um, accumulation through exploitation. And so, uh, and par part of what I see in the table of contents is a very sincere and um, sustained strategy to allow for expressivity to persist in an economic. Uh, network in such a way that it's not vitiated by existing value forms, but can actually mm -hmm. um, be written and protocolized and ledgered otherwise, such that um, the values that people actually bring to the productive sphere persist and integrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Sorry, so what I say to add, yeah, yeah. I'd add to that, although um, yeah, it's, it's a couple of comments uh, passed in, in, in relevance. Uh, it's just yeah that, that that a lot of um, our take on like economy has a grammar, economy has a language, and trying to give formal meaning to that, it's uh, uh, it has not been uh, a effort that we have pursued directly. It yeah. basically become a necessity. The outcome of trying to bridge all these different discourses, right? Because it is it is it's been uh, quite difficult at time like. Um, 
uh, closing the chasm across different like sometimes sometimes uh, there's just no intersection point <laughs> it's not only that there's 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 a, or it's intersection through other disciplines um so so um yeah that's 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 uh that's uh the that's both the tension and as actually says like in the resolution of the tension uh uh it can be put towards the service of of, of creativity right like um bridging itself has been a lot of what this document is is, is all about or, or um it's basically documenting the, the 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 artificial nexus point across disciplines that we have had to um articulate and of course with with particular uh, a set of criteria, right? Of what we want to be see, seeing being created, because that's the other aspect, mm -hmm. right? Each one of us have had really strong positions that often they felt like at odds with each other, <laughs> and and then we have had to negotiate those positions, and and um, a lot of what the economic space protocol is 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 basically the resolution. Uh, process of the resolution of, of that yeah, oh, innovation. It's also an innovation process. Well, yeah. it it mm -hmm. has to be right. Yeah. So so uh, I just want to acknowledge that. And uh, yeah, coming from from a um, engineering background, you can imagine how difficult it was for me to like <laughs> make my brain, um, you know, uh, uh, compatible with all these different forms of thinking. And as a result, I guess, like get access to, to what, an education that I will have not gotten any other way. <laughs> There's no way. So yeah, just want to say that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and I, some you of know, our, I mean, sorry, go, go ahead. on, John. I was just gonna say in, in some of our, our, our tense conversations, the, it would go something like this, that, that, that Jorge would say to me, you're trying to draw pictures of rockets and I'm trying to design a rocket <laughs> that'll actually launch into space. And I say, but I'm not sure I want to ride on the rocket that you're designing. So, <laughs> so we're, we're going to have to go back and talk about this some more. So, so they, these are sort of the, the tense edge of, of that reconciliation. Which in some ways, for, to me, like it, it kind of goes to that question of econo economies redesignability. Like, can it actually be design like such that it becomes something that a drawing can be illustrative of a redesign rather than just mm. a you know like that's like it's almost what's at stake it was fun to listen to you know um for those who don't know or are listening to this later you know uh, matthew slater of the credit commons um has recorded an audiobook version of this paper and i listened to the introduction today in the in the fall sunshine you know, it was like, mm -hmm. it was a good way of, good way of being at work. And uh, yeah, you can find that on the telegram, uh, but it was, it was so lovely to hear it. And especially because like what you all said was, it was like, I heard some writing that was that hard work of pulling these together, like the distributed computational perspective, the political economy perspective, like the organizational theorist perspective and actually making it so they nest together. Um, so that was yeah into that, something that pretty really unique impressive. i think yeah 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 i just think that's one of the great challenges of, of the document which i mean has, has been um met admirably in, in in most cases i mean which is like how, how do you sort of balance this really high level of abstraction and political economic analysis where you're not just um saying what is but you're actually actually trying to posit a, a new um grammar for political economy and keep in mind sort of like, you know, um, the precarity that everyday people experience, the, the difficulties that people face with pandemic and exploitation and a history of extraction. Uh, and how do you sort of have all of that co-present at the same time in it so that discursively it's a good read? <laughs> and, I, and I feel like, you know, also, yeah. hearing the introduction today, I, I really feel like a lot of that was accomplished. Yeah, you listened to it too, right? Yeah, I did. It was nice. The dulcet tones of um, that's so, mm. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I, I think we should add. Sorry, sorry. Just, just before Joel, we 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 move on. It's also important that we don't sound smug and we all sit around and say we nailed it. But because mm. you know, I, I I think we we all between us have a very strong sense that that the the processes we're trying to describe have contingencies, mm. vulnerabilities, 
unknowns, unknown, unknowns. They're all in there. And, and, and part of what would be good about this reading group is not that we'll ever sort of get a system that, 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 that is, is totalised, but that seeing new eyes, critical new eyes cast across this, this document uh, is going to be an important exercise in us working out where to put emphasis, where not to put emphasis, what bits seem to work and what bits don't seem to work, et cetera. So, so getting some, some strong feedback from, um, from all, all the, uh, the kind people who have chosen to join us uh, feels not just, oh, that'll be a bit interesting, but it feels really integral to what we're, what we're trying to do here. Well, yeah. just I think Dick, I mean, I, I completely agree, and and I do have a criticism for pretty much every paragraph. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, honestly, I mean, it's job. There, there are things to quibble with, like sort of you know, at, 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 at every paragraph at least. Um, but I, I do think that the effort was monumental, and I, I just want to, as you know, I want to acknowledge that that there's it's really something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think. Um... Absolutely. To we, we uh, to me, almost it's just like this thing is impressive enough to open up and wrestle with and and improve. It's impressive enough to improve. Kind of to follow mm -hmm. what you're saying, Dick. In a way, like this is to the point where it's a it, we can something to really talk about, and that's a that's really that really feels amazing. I guess you know because I think a lot of us working both both the, anybody on X, but people on countless other projects, you know, throughout the crypto sphere have been working towards these kind of things. So if we. Right. We can start a really good conversation, um, yeah. And and I think that there, you know, like we had a great meeting with Block Science um, that was organized by Orion, who's here, um, and it was so amazing because they were talking just like mm. Exa, but with a totally different set of skills as well, you know. And mm. so there was like this, it was like it was a little bit like a quantum leap or Doctor Who or something like that, you know. You'd be like, oh my God, they have they have so much to offor to in their reflection the reflections on what we're doing. You know, and that's and that's true of everyone we met in Berlin and before as well. So I couldn't agree more. And so let's use the people that are here. Like, yeah, like we say, we're gonna experiment with this kind of way of doing it, where it's like chat enabled. And I'm gonna be like the, ch the chat maestro. So, and then and then we'll get feedback and see how we do it next month. But uh, but yeah, the chat is open to to share things and interrupt these guys. I, I like I love to interrupt them. So fun. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, this is definitely something to open up to continue co-creating. Uh, that's right. So, um, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if Dick might um, want to say a few words. I mean, not to summarize the introduction or anything like that, but just to um, set it up a little bit because I think the approach, you know, we, what I would want to discuss is, um, and Dick said this uh, in a, a conversation mm -hmm. recently, that you know each of us might have arrived at a similar um, position or a, a, a similar um, mm -hmm. sort of demand on um, the economy from very different perspectives. And so, and, and so one of the things that really struck me was how, um, you know, sort of setting up finance as the scene of sort of like domination and potential intervention uh, was one way into this uh, to this project. And I think that's really an important approach, although it's clearly not the only one. I mean, I, I'm I married through a media history, for example, you know, mm -hmm. sort of in which the way in which media has been financialized um, and now functions primarily as fixed capital um, and, and arrived at a similar sort of, uh, as I said, demand on the economy to, to reimagine the way in which expression is modulated and and, um, and shared. But I, maybe Dick, you want to say something about you know the, the short history of finance, or I, I thought that particularly the, the idea that finance is uncontested in some ways, or that there's yeah. I mean yeah So so maybe maybe talk mm. about that for a second just to set it up. Okay. Just 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 a couple of little, little things on that, and and just for those who don't know, the the, the reason John's throwing to me is that that I did the scribing of this. It was, it was a, a lot of the work was, was, was me and Jorge uh, in arm wrestles, mm -hmm. sometimes thinking we'd agreed and then working out that we were using words differently and actually we didn't agree. But anyway, I played up that issue enough of, of, mm -hmm. of, of the struggle. So that, that's, why, that's why John's thrown to me is because I, I did, I did the, the scribing of, 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 of these drafts. So I, I think as John said, we could get to the subsequent chapters in in multiple ways, and, and it, it does reflect my training as an economist. That 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 will come come through there. 
Um, but I, I think I was try, sort of trying to get to a few areas. One was that the emergence of, of, of Web3 and social media created new possibilities for designing distributed communications processes. And, and, and that's not something that I feel I'm an expert in, and I hope it, it'll come up. Uh, you know, other people soon will, um, will, will be, be talking mm. about it. But that's a new historically uh, contingent opportunity that, that it has been arising in the last decade or so. And, and that's an important foundation for the capacity to be able to develop this, this, this proposal. The second thing that I also hope we'll talk about is the, the, the consequences of, of economic, um, well, crisis is always too dramatic a word, but, you know, it, dramatically changing economic circumstances that first manifested in the, the global financial crisis and are now manifesting in, in, in new ways in which the, the money system and the financial system was showing its vulnerability uh, and not just that, 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 that finance was in crisis, but also the stabilities of the past, the, the, the notion of what it meant to lead a safe and secure economic and financial life, they're being stripped away. You know, the, 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 the loss of um, secure jobs, the, uh, the precarity of, of, of living. And this wasn't may have been mm. experienced negatively, but it also held a lot of potential for, 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 for people to, to try and do their, their economic activities in new ways. And then the third area, which is the one that John just emphasised, was about finance. Uh, coming from the left of, of, of politics, I sort of hung around, hang around with a whole lot of people who hate finance. You know, it's all parasitic and it's all speculative and, and we, their desire would be to, um, to, to, to muzzle finance so that we can get back to the real stuff of production. But I and we take the position that if you want to change something, you go to the front, you go to its frontier. You don't wish its frontier away. You go to the frontier and in at the beginning of the 20th century, if you were wanting to challenge capitalism, you would challenge the form of industry because that was the frontier of capitalism, the borders mm -hmm. production line, etc. You get to the beginning of the 20th century and you can see whether we call it neoliberalism or not, doesn't matter, but we can see the frontier developments are in the domain, domain of finance. So the question then is, how do you get the tiger by the tail and say, we're not going to push back and say finance is all bad, but how can we use the techniques of finance to try and imagine something, something that's different? Because the techniques of mm -hmm. finance are fabulously creative and innovative. They yeah, might be powerful, used for yeah. purposes, but yeah, they are powerful. So, so, so really then we want to say, how can we think of a an analytical challenge and a political challenge that frames the world financially. Because there we can, once we frame it financially, we can both engage what's going wrong with the world and that early potential of, of social and economic media to, to sort of reconfigure uh, a, a new form of finance. So I think that that's what structured this introduction, th those three areas. And as I hear John talking, he would have put the emphasis elsewhere, but I think those three elements would have come through no matter which of us was writing this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. I, I just think that um, what I would add to that, I mean, just in this particular venue is, you know, as someone who thinks, you know, dialectically, um, you know, the, in, yes, industry was the place in which um, capital could be challenged, certainly. Uh, but at the same time as industry was taking place, there was also the organization of cartels, you know, and Lenin wrote this book called Imperialism, the United States of Capitalism, right, where the political um, and nationalist struggle um, and decolonial struggle emerges as sort of another scene of antithesis to capital consolidation. And so with finance now, the, I think it's worth asking because we do sort of depend on this actually the kind of discontent of the precarity of financialization is one of the driving forces in this um in this uh, uh of this project and of the text but um what is that what what are the actual enemies of finance right now that's I mean, that's one, one of the questions and so i think it's nice to foreground them to keep them in mind because this is also sort of our constituency you know this is uh, the if we think about it so i mean i would just 
list um, very, very schematically, something like, you know, climate change, for example, or mm -hmm. the, the fact of refugees, right? The fact that, you know, we now have, we have, we now have migration uh, uh, beyond the scale of World War II, which is, you know, normally takes place at the end of world wars, right? So what kind of war is taking place right now? I mean, to me, that's the world, that's the war that finance actually expresses, right? And so the techniques of finance and financialization are something we want to think about, but the underside mm -hmm. of that is also what we're trying to address. The other thing I want to, just to add to my list would be um, really uh, psychopathology and, um, and forms of uh, mental illness, right? The fact that so many people are feeling sick, so many people are exhausted, as, as well as like physical health, right? Pandemic, mm -hmm. but these kinds of uh, dispossessions of, um, of well -be from well-being uh, is the other side of finance, right? And so even though, so finance has this mega structure, this capacity to organize the world in its own interests, but all of us are actually participating in that process and yet we can express our own interest in it. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, there's no, Financial virgins, in that sense. And can can I can I just like also frame that we, we're appropriating or even like repurposing finance itself, particularly with the with the, with the capacity to to define new value forms uh, as as a way to address mm. this. Uh, so I would say finance in its current configuration, but not finance in itself, because we need to acknowledge also like we are occupying all these existing protocols, so to speak, and in and redesigning. Just key components in the in the under the presumption again still but uh, uh, an informed one that we can we can repurpose them while still maintaining backwards compatibility. So that is not to 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 frame finance itself as 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 evil, but more like the current use of finance and and uh, understanding it as a creative medium itself that we hope mm -hmm. we can repurpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that post-capitalism, it is also financial. That's for sure. Yes. yes I mean, what uh, is what is post-capitalism to you guys? I guess it's a it's a is question. A... Yeah. So so I, I think that it's it's the like okay. Dick was naming like this was it three or four things. Then I I might add a couple of things there. But for me, I mean, this introduction, for instance, it's it's if it's trying to take us somewhere, it's really the like uh, like uh, like the title of the sec first section, the one one point one is the contesting the current order, and the question is like how, so wh how, how do you do it? Like, uh, uh, and then there are the, like these key some of the key uh, elements that we think that are essential to it. For instance, finance we we gotta get to the forefront of it. Uh, then there is the the yes. Economy is becoming programmable. There's this technological, technological uh, uh, advancement, distributed computation, which is basically making it, it almost like an expressive medium. Or oh, it starts to re resemble something like that. But then one thing I would add is the, yeah, there's the technology. But then another, like a real condition for the emergence, what what we are proposing, is also the, like the breakdown of the economic. Knowledge is yeah. It's the like the central banks are like the tools they they have in, uh, have uh, or what they're trying to do. It's 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 not not working anymore. They they can't provide the security and stability that they 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 were trying to. But then also there are some other like uh, the blurring between of the distinction between debt and equity. It's 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 things are like those things which were thought almost to be like eternal. They they are moving. There's there's they're breaking, and 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 this is providing us the opportunity to, to kind of uh, to play forward again on the forefront of that 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 uh, that movement. Then, then, uh, yeah, from from my perspective, also the, the political side is very important. That mm. that that it it seems to us, and this is kind of a, one of the key elements, to, at least to me, is the that if we don't move to this protocol level i don't think we have politics it's not low anymore in, on the on the on the level of meaning and negotiation that much but it's on this level of this designing these like self evidences of the interaction uh, which can be kind of uh, contested and if we don't engage there we 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 kind of 
uh, affect like uh, our own lives anymore. So it's a must. Mm -hmm. And that's where our organization and comes into it, like in terms of, it almost has something to do with like things going viral or like the network effect or being able to speak in numbers of rather than in self-expression. Is that is that kind of what you mean when you talk about like the, the because I agree like that the politics is at the protocol level, like being able to design your own governance, basically. Right? Yeah, I said, yeah, they said the, the, the attractors of your own behavior. I mean, that's that's autonomy. Yeah. And that's well, the direction where we're going. Expressivity, is, expressivity is, is currently farmed, right? I mean, effectively, you know, all, all the internet activity and all the traffic that's driven on the internet through extremist, uh, proto-fascist and actually fascist um, forms of um, memes and postings. That's a farming of our emotional libidinal capacities by fixed capital. And um, I think what's happening is that politics is sort of like not fully conscious of the substrate on which it um, expresses itself and therefore is effectively neutralized because of the economic overdetermination of its outcomes. And, and so what we need to do is we sort of like get into reach into the protocol layer in order to change the character of expression so that qualities and sociality can persist in new ways, ways that it, it can right now. I mean, and since you asked about anti-capitalism, I mean, post-capitalism, I think it's important to sort of see that that's part of post-capitalism, right? Post-capitalism is actually the capacity to transcend the extractive relations which underpin our, expressive, our expressivity and our sociality. I mean, there's been anti-capitalist movements, A-N-T-I, and there certainly has been anti-capitalism, A-N-T-E. I mean, there's been societies before capitalism, uh, both of which we can learn a lot from. I mean, but post-capitalism would be a refusal of extraction as being the fundamental uh, basis in which one participates in the economy. Uh, and I, I think that's something that we're really working on. Um, and just one more comment about what Excelli was saying too, about these mm -hmm. terms, sort of the pressure that's being put on these terms, both from above, as it were, by capital's own exigencies and from below by the resistance to capitalist forms is starting to break up the, the um, categories of debt and equity, for example. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and many other economic categories, um, even like the difference between commodity and expressivity, right? Between um, mm -hmm. image and commodity. Uh, and, and to the point where it's actually um, there's a battle being waged over what these outcomes are going to look like. And so what Jorge said about finance, right? I mean, in a way, I agree with what he's saying, because I think I understand the spirit of it. But in a way, I disagree with it, because finance is a bad word right now. We're actually trying to take it and sort of say, well, what we can do other things with finance, but in order to actually turn it into the opposite of what it is right now, it's a determinant of finance. So finance actually becomes the opposite of what it is right now. Is it still finance or is it some sort of other kind of utopian or communist sort of like sociality? So I don't know if we know the answer. Does it still, yeah, does it still use some of those beautiful creative tricks that Dick was talking? So do we know, hmm. uh, do yeah. we get to the point where um, we might not need those? Yeah, yeah. Ryan was just, uh, talking about how Jonathan's, uh, um, and we were negotiating the meeting, so sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Orion was just uh, bringing up Mark Fisher, you know, and uh, his stuff around capitalist realism. Uh, like, I like how you call his, his stuff, his clique that comes with him, his clique, which is very true, which dealt with the psychological impact of alienation and precarity. For me, that angle was a better entry point to post-capitalist leftist politics than any pamphlet from Lenin or Bakunin ever could be. Mm, yeah so i think and i'd say but on that ab go ahead absolutely but because the 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 lenin and bakunin were, were, were talking about the issue of m mobilizing a class that had a sense of itself as class and and confronting the emerging industrial capitalism in its in its industrial form we're, we're, we're talking about a world where there is not so much a sense of 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 class, at least not in that in that in that same solidaristic sense. Mm -hmm. But there's a ho whole lot of dispersed individual experiences of um, that the world's not working for people the way it used to. You know that 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 the idea that you'll get a job, buy a house, or or or, or even that you might work in in a in a uh, a, a socially embracing uh, class culture that's that's that seems to be un, under under significant challenge and part of the the role of finance part of the the the, the strategy of finance is actually to, to decompose everyone into individuals to make your own circumstance very particular so it's the loan yeah. for you the contract for you 
So it, it, it breaks down those solidarities and they get reassembled through social media that, as, as John says, then, then, then harvests what it is, what, what these common experiences are in, 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 in different ways. And it's always the advertisement for you, the this for you, the that for you. So, so, so the collectivist thing is, is always being broken down. So, yeah, I agree, Orion. That these other modes of entry to understand the momentum for change are really critical. There's just one other issue that I'd, I'd mm -hmm. like to, to to mention that probably should have been been mentioned earlier about why why go to finance, and that is that probably, and, and this is this is about about the bit, the significance of the Bitcoin white paper, that that mm -hmm. when we we've thought about politics in the past, we've never thought about challenging the money system the financial system you know mm. that 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 and when the bolsheviks were since we're, we're back there when the bolsheviks were um were writing their pamphlets that then they're, they're not writing critiques of the russian ruble and it's and it's and it's mode of measurement it sort of wasn't where the radar of politics is because money was always associated with the state um the bitcoin white paper at least for me, was a was a real you know jaw dropper because it suddenly said there could be a money outside the state. Now, I'm not saying that means bitcoins that money outside the mm -hmm. state, but it opened mm -hmm. opened that potential to say that money and what money does, money through time, which is finance, is a point of contestation. And one of the reasons yeah. now we have to focus on finance, I think, is to say that that if we want to link the present to the future, and, and that's an economy that you're building, isn't about trade in the moment, just I'm going to give this to you, a token goes back the other way, etc. If you're wanting to talk about an economy, it's something that happens through time with investment, both physical investment and emotional investment. And some something has to give orderly connection between the present and the future. Historically, we've always defined that with the state. You know, the state's money, the state's policies, the state's laws, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But once you sort of, once you say, we want to think of a financial, we, we want to think of, a, of an economy that is not state dependent, it's not devoid of the state, but it's not a politics through the state to get welfare, more income redistribution, et cetera. But you want to take it outside the state. The thing that is always going to link the present to the future is finance, financial contracts, because that's what they address explicitly. What is the connection between now to the future? How do we draw down an image of the future, an identity of the future, and give it an identity now? That's really what finance is doing. So in, a, in an important sense, finance stands in for the state. You know, we, we, we put finance mm. at the centre and it's our alternative to the state. And as we'll see as these chapters go through, in the, in the design of financial contracts, actually we're trying to pull the state role out and put a financial role in, and in the process making sure that financial role points in a different direction. But I think that's an abiding theme we've got here. Yeah, I agree. That's a really well put. Mm. So, so it's kind of for this, 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 like, yeah, present to the future, meaning also or like creating a more longer term, like a more longer term social relationship than just like a market relations that just, just collapses all the sociality, like a little bit longer relationships, which points to this economic network, which is, I think, one of the key insights that uh, we, we, we've uh, come to. And then the, the, the also it's in the second, second 1.2, section in the in the introduction i think the what what i would like to in fact ask that we would talk a little bit about this like like what 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 we're saying there that we think that the next frontier the big big move in the crypto must be towards that towards production towards organization towards this more longer term relationships towards these economic networks um, um and i think that's i think we have yeah, right. There. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I think the other thing to say about um, Bitcoin, which is um, that it's it's a social medium, 
Right. I mean, that, that, that's 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 um, something that I, I think is missed oftentimes in thinking about cryptocurrencies that like, you know, Facebook or Twitter, they are social media. Um, it's just they have kind of narrow band uh, capacity for transmitting information, um, but they nonetheless depend upon network and um, the, the deployment and development of networks for their uh, viability for their currency. Um, and, 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 and as much as that's the case, we can also see what's happened with um social media in relationship to production right because you know the mm-hmm. I mean, if, if communicate and I, I mean this goes back to me working on attention economy and stuff like that but if, if communication were just sort of like talking and not actually actually productive of some kind of value it would be possible to you know extract from things like cinema and social media the billions of dollars which are being are gaming the billions of dollars which are being extracted and so these things have actually been machines for the curation of production right but because of the, the computation and financial architecture underneath them all that value goes to the top to shareholders what we want to do is recognize what I think we're recognizing what's going to happen in the crypto space very quickly is people are going to realize, wow, all these communities and all this community making is actually productive of futures. It's actually wagers on the future, mm-hmm. right? And so who and how, how is that future going to, going to cohere? Who's going to sort of like share in the in the fruits of that future? What's the character of that future? And it's going to take cryptocurrency actually to manage uh, the, the large scale coordination among many people in order to recognize, to realize goals that are other than what's being scripted right now. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think to pick up on on um, Axley's point and and push beyond what 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 mm. John was saying, the in, the interesting thing that I think we got to and it, and it's sort of it's announced in this introductory chapter is this focus on production, and as I was saying at, at the beginning, it seems pretty obvious that if you want to design an economy, talk about the design of an economy, you've got to have production. You know, it's got to be it's got to be the centerpiece. But for a long time in our in our writing, the, the production was sort of just a black box, uh, and and really, it's it was Jorge who who came up with the proposition of uh, mutual staking as a as a way to 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 talk about production in the context of exchange focused ledgers. And to give some, instead of thinking about finance that just whizzes around all the time, that production is is a slowing down. It's a process of commitment. It's a process of having to to create rather than just transfer. So I'd like to to hear Jorge just say a little bit about how how he got to the issue of of framing production through staking. Well, it wasn't it wasn't how how originally. Uh, we're right there. Uh, for me, like I'll 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 feel like how, how I got there and then how we plugged it <laughs> to mutual staking. But basically, um, one of the one of the uh, uh, multi week discussions between Dick and me, if not multi month, mm-hmm. is how to tie um, liquidity uh, provision to performativity. Basically, how is it that you create issuance mm-hmm. uh, that is tied to a production process, right? And it is or it isn't, sorry. That, that is, that is a production is, yeah. process, right? Yeah, and it was like, Dick was insisting like, uh, it needs to be tied to production process. It needs to be tied like I, and it was the, the proposals uh, uh, coming from Dick was like uh, a chairman or, or some sort of central agent, which in the end we're going to end up doing uh, uh, as a first phase, but uh, sort of making that decision, right? It's like, how is it? And, and, and my angle was like, this has to be an endogenous process. It cannot be um, an agent that is external to the network because we end up with a hierarchical sort of state like figure making these decisions. And I recognize the, 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 the need for that, right? Production issues tied to production. Um, but I didn't, I didn't like the, the solution, right? So we kept like negotiating, trying to find out what was the essence of what we were pursuing. And eventually we, we came up to this concept of the, the a performance and a performance index. Performance uh, being a way of capturing production in an abstract sense and uh, performance index as a way to measure dimensions of that, of that production mm-hmm. that then could be encoded 
as, as, as uh, some sort of uh, heuristic or logic for issues. And um, that, 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 um, that framing uh, gave rise to, okay, so if we acknowledge that, that we can encode these productive processes as performances, and by the way, there's this pressure into like uh, on the other side, for, for instance, uh, uh, the need to encode uh, different value forms, because one of the things that we keep testing against is, can you value the ecosphere with this? Or sociality, and like all these abstract value forms, right? Mm -hmm. like, okay, performance is the, the, so it was framing it like we need a, a, a more abstract, wider, wider, wider um, uh, uh, concept on production itself. Something that is really more uh, computation, right? And actually, I, I would like to invite uh, Orion to, to framing that, that he shared with me about like instead of means of production, means of computation. So I don't know if Orion has mm -hmm. done that, like, you, mm -hmm. can, you can break that into, into the forefront. Um, but basically, the performance basically capturing economically mm -hmm. framed uh, uh, computation, good. right? And then, then if we know that production requires the creation of liquidity and the and the and the sharing of uh, of the outputs, right? And knowing that that we want to pursue an endogenous process that is protocol mediated and not an external agent making those decisions, but the network itself making those decisions, and um, we sort of shifted this notion of mutual credit into mutual staking, right? And then it's like, oh, okay. And then that became really obvious that stake is, 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 is it needs to be um, the collateral for credit. And stake is sort of like the value representation of, of the performance, performativity, the performance over time of a particular network. Can you say that last part just one more time again? Just that last bit? Yeah, the, 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 the stake, it's, it's capturing the value. It's encoding financially, as a financial instrument, the value of a performative a process, right? Like the performance, not as an event, but performance as a series of events over time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, because it's doing that, then that can be used for, for as collateral to bring liquidity. That means uh, the capacity to, to, to uh, um, the, the, the equivalent of, of, of money in our system uh, to enable the actual inputs that are needed to, to create and recognizing the inputs that are, are needed to, to bring about the performance and frame it as an output of that particular uh, economic space. So mutual staking allows that, that, that liquidity creation and value distribution um, uh, in, in a way that doesn't entail a central external agent. So I don't know if, 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 if that's what you were alluding to, Dick. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, can you continue the, from Horner there a little bit like, so what is a performance? Define that a little bit. What can be a performance? Yeah, well, anything. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of the beauty of it, right? So um, performance is anything that happens in a particular space, whether that space is physical or virtual, in a particular moment in time. So anything that can be recorded, basically, right? Anything that can be recorded means anything that can be articulated. And most importantly, um, is a movement, a series of state changes, right? It's like uh, a, 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 uh, a conversion of something, gradual conversion of something into something else, right? It's like movement, right? So, uh, and, and, and what, what uh, uh, the performance try, trying to capture is like uh, frame all existent production processes as these movements, and um, also recognize there's the, give, give a way for other productive but not currently recognized uh, processes to also be encoded uh, uh, and recorded, right? So uh, for as long as something happens, right? And can be communicated, it can be made a performance. So basically explain thing. And it's, it's a very general abstraction that can be utilized. To, to capture um, abstract uh, value creation processes. 
uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would say that it's our, it's um, what we're using as the general term for value creation. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. what Hori's talking about is sort of you can think of it in terms of like you know the creation of commodities, even where you know what you do is you um, change the state of matter. Uh, so you, you you form matter by informing it uh, in some way. And, um, you know, we can imagine that um, state changes, whether they're sort of um, in wooden objects or in computational states, are things that can be recorded and in order to be uh, executed have to require certain kinds of performances. <clears throat> so the performance is the general sort of uh, uh, form of value creation. And I mean, it resonates with Verno's notion of virtuosity, you know, with ideas about attention economy, with you know, queer theory's notion of perfor queer performativity. I mean, there's all, there's there's been for a long time already a sense that there are ways of creating value that are not strictly economic. What we're seeing, I think, is that these informal uh, efforts to create values are being subsumed by the current economy. And if we can frame them out differently, we can avoid that subsumption. Yeah, that, that's and, what I was thinking as, as well with the what you were saying, Jorge, because the in the economic space protocol, it's a it's a agent centric protocol, right? Like every, it's all. So, is it would it be right to say then, so that we're kind of do, we're just relations all, relationship centric even more? Yeah, yeah, relation. Yeah, I mean, it's all in, in terms of like the offers that agents make to each other, and and so that when you talk about a state change of a performance, like a donut shop or or how I walk with my grandma every day, you know, or something like that. Like that's something that has other agents involved with it to make those state changes in that, in that way, right? That they're kind of doing the work of uh, validators in some way, distributed validators of, of those performances. Like they have to like somehow, you know, just take my word for it, right? That, that, that it's valuable, but it needs to become valuable through, not just through likes, but also through staking you know, through a general, that is a longer ongoing like social web that gets expressed through staking. Um, it, is, is this kind of in the, in the right direction or would you make some changes there? No, no, I think you're, you're absolutely right. And, and, and recognizing this um, social uh, towards economic grammar that replacing the like for stake uh, it's, it's one of the many venues of interface creation, right? And, 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 and not the only one too. Um, and that's a whole other conversation that actually the paper doesn't, doesn't cover of how to make accessible uh, these protocols, right? Like, because ultimately, even from an economic perspective, most people uh, are familiar and will be just uh, uh, reluctant to use anything else than, than something that looks like money in the way it's used. But mm -hmm. what we're saying is that even that can be put in operation in a completely different way. Like one little transaction, instead of just being a transfer of money, it can be stake plus uh, uh, credit plus uh, creating a particular performance all in one single operation, right? So, and, and that is to meld and to match with the, the rest of, of, of coherently with the rest of the, 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 the economy's productive process on this framing, right? So um, what I would add also uh, to, to what uh, Jonathan was saying is also the, the, the beauty of the concept of performance. It also has a legal meaning that mm. applies perfectly and a computational mm -hmm. meaning. So, so it, it just like really nicely melts multiple disciplines into one abstraction that depending on which the same word, uh, there's not many of those in, in this space, uh, can be understood and can, can be used as, a, as a, a pointer to different discourses and still hold its meaning in different discourses. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, maybe I, I'll, I'll pick up from there to the, to the, um, oh, go, because I'm kind of, my thoughts are all going, all, already going to the last section, last sections, like the, the, the finance section and the living the spread section. I want to talk about those, but before that, I don't want to like lose the, the middle section up where, where, where it first, is expressed that in fact the economic space protocol it's a language, language that the that the users, agents use to interact and understand, and kind of a like a that that, that has been really the, one of the key key insights that I think we we have, and um, uh, uh, that it's it's really a economic messaging protocol a language, and uh, let's talk about that a little bit no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just what Jorge was saying, um, you know, 
that, that we don't the, the paper doesn't even deal with uh, the way in which you can sort of like in one single gesture create um stake credit and performance or performance recognition um because we haven't actually gotten there yet honestly but the, but the thing is this is what we're talking about, about creating a new financial literacy and a new financial imaginary right that it's it's really important to begin to recognize that knowing it or not we're, we're engaged in financial performativity all the time right okay. and the more we the more we become conscious of it, the more we become conscious of the protocol layer, which um which transmits some of our um, economic process to others who are then are the receivers of that. The more we can design those elements, the more we'll have to become literate in a new mode of socialization, right? Because we'll have a set of con the same way people have learned how to use Facebook, you know, and Instagram and TikTok with like unbelievable uh, efficiency and expressivity. We're going to be programming economy at that level. We're gonna we're gonna have to learn. I mean, that's what I was saying before when I introduced myself. It's like we have to be able to program the social. I mean, the social is already being programmed, but we have to be able to program it from mm -hmm. below. The, 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 those who are being disenfranchised, dispossessed, have to be able to reprogram the social. And like you said, yeah. they've already been doing it, but this is kind of like wanting to augment those already amazing discoveries that have been made under the worst of circumstances over the past however many hundred years over the, under the violence of colonialism across the world. And we're, we're just kind yeah. of trying to like grab some of that intelligence and bring it together to make it like functional in a new way. Yeah, it, look, it, it's really interesting because uh, th this framing, because of course the economist in me says, guys, what you're really talking about is an alternative concept of value. Mm. And, I, I, and, I, and I know it doesn't reduce to an alternative concept of value, but this is just a little illustration of how our, our parallel brains, I mean, I'm not suggesting that other people who have just spoken wouldn't get to the concept of what do we mean by value, but but it's on the same momentum of, an, of a, an analysis that gets us there. How does the network determine that which performances it wants to value and which it wants to say, eh, good try, but we're not really interested in what you're doing. Uh, you know, the, it's not getting any resonance around, around this network. And so at an economic mm -hmm. level, that's about how do we get away from relying on prices to signal mm -hmm. that something's worthwhile and how, or how do we get away from capitalist specific notions of value such as Marx's theory of you know value based on on on, on labor time driven by labor that goes into make things profitable how do we think about value differently and that's where this computation from the ground up is about saying how do you build how do you use issues of language uh, literacy imaginary how do you how do they combine economically? to say we've got to have a mechanism by which a network validates the performances of others in a coherent, mm -hmm. transparent way and can talk about this, this economy as creating new value, even hopefully creating a surplus, you know, it, it, giving itself the potential to reproduce itself. How do we think about that value system from the ground up? That's, that's also part of exactly the same set of issues, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you're saying is, a, yeah, that's that. Like, what is post-capitalist finance? Basically, that's the that's the 1.5 section there. Well, and it's it's a messaging yeah. challenge too, because you know I think that I feel like like John often says it's like, oh yeah, that's that's happening already. You know, this kind of it's like the the social the social network, this kind of vicious validation or devalidation, right? So I think it's a uh, it was nice to hear it spoken today in the audio recording because I think it gets through that um, a little bit more, like more quickly than it does the other. But it's like that there is actually like it seems at a certain point like oh that's what we're kind of doing. We're too close to each other. Um, we're we're validating you know we're assessing rather kind of the various things we're doing that is backed up by a certain idea of value that puts us into this corner where we only have these options to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's not immediately there just in the way that finance is like, a, like another level to put your brain at in the same way. This is like, it's like, okay, we, we're not going to get to freedom by being free of performance and it's, and then being free of being able to produce for each other. Like sometimes these memes, some of these, I like Dick, your take on kind of the, the, the frustration, the, the, the frustratingness of the old left, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. And it was represented by this meme that I saw when they were mm -hmm. like, it's people just like even young people who are in, in this kind of old left style. They're like, I just want to 
I just want to like kind of be in the river and drinking tea and why do I have to have a, a job or why do I have to work or it's like this very bizarre like fuck everything that would have me like build anything like the building impetus is you know there's this whole thing that's like moves a totally different direction and, uh, but, that, but that's a symptom and, of and drink tea right? that's a <laughs> Not a beer, you mean? But that, that, that's a symptom of, of exhaustion and burnout too. Because people, I mean, there are, we have no alternatives for creativity when every right. single, every place we turn is a, an occasion for dispossession. So, so that's I mean, right. of course, people are exhausted. You know, I mean, Marx says as much about you know when you look at the worker. You know, as soon as the compulsion of the to work disappears, they drop it like the plague, right? And that and that's how yeah. that's how we're all feeling. I mean, I think it's important to say that and Dig mentioned this word earlier, but. Um, the part of the mm. power of the protocols is the possibility for reimagining kinship, right? Recreating forms of solidarity, which is not just sort of like an economic relationship in the narrow sense. It's a structure of feeling. It's a it's a it's an embodied sensibility and a form of relationality with others, which has affective dimensions, which is can be beautiful and which can be deep, right? And so we don't know how to make that way um, unless we're artists or dancers or you know some kind of you know creatives who found a ex little exceptional space where we can be separate from mm -hmm. our productive life, right? In order to create this little reserve space that's mm -hmm. insulated but it's precisely the extension of those feelings and those sensibilities which um is the uh, i think the imperative of this platform yeah oh yeah i think that the, it's the it's the messaging of it that i was pointing to that i totally agree with you just like how do how does that i think that's part of the thing to get feedback on too which you guys already have and how does it how can it come off exactly like that when mm. when i think that what we get sold as a bill of goods is like take a vacation from your problems because that's all you're going to get and you have to come back mm -hmm. to them and so we need to instill an appetite for there's a mm -hmm. there's a change here, actually the, the protocol yeah mm -hmm. um, jorge was wondering if it's a good moment to also hear some some questions or which we could write in the chat mm -hmm. or we can open it up we could, we could stop recording um what do people think let's uh, yeah i still want to talk about the two last sections because they are in fact yeah pretty powerful so maybe at least if we if the the language aspect didn't get the support or, or then let's go <laughs> to the let's get into the finance aspect in the sense that like um like i mean because that's about like what does it really mean to go beyond capitalism as a financial system dick the, yeah the, okay the, well I, I do hope there'll be some 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 questions, but but while while they're coming in, um, I, I think and and it follows from everything that's been said until now that I, I think if we want to say we we want to build something alternative, something significantly alternative, where can the challenges lie and how can they be articulated through finance? Mm. I think what we're trying to do is say we want to ask questions that people generally about things that people generally take for granted and say if 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 we can challenge we can challenge things that are generally taken for granted and there's that with there so if you're sort of thinking about we don't have to be dominated by the state's money and the state's finance and the state's uh and the domination of profit criteria in the economy then we can start asking questions like you know in the context of of money and assets, what does it mean to say that something is liquid? Now we have a, a notion mm. of liquidity that runs through the banking system. You know that 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 cash is liquid, that deposits in the bank are liquid. But if you don't want to be thinking through conventional banks, we reopen this question: What's collateral? If we're going to have distributed credit issuance, what backs credit? We it needs backing. It's got to be collateralized because there's no state guarantees here. So what's going to count as collateral? What's going to count as the surplus in the economy? If we don't want to just say the only concept of a surplus is stuff that's profitable, but we want to go beyond mm. profit and maybe even count as part of surplus value creation that has nothing to do with profit calculus, how are we going to think about this? And, of course, that final question there, who's going to decide about these? And the answer to the who's going to decide is the, probably the clearest answer. It's the members of the network in distributed processes who need to decide. That's that's sort of our political dictum here. 
and they will be the ones who will decide what collateral is, what, what liquidity is, and what a surplus is. Um, so in that sense, going back to Joel's really early question, what do you mean by post-capitalism? I don't think there's a clear answer here except to say that distributed processes uh, across the network determine the answer to those questions of what's liquidity, what's collateral, and what's surplus, and every, virtually everything else follows from the answers to those questions. You know, mm. who, who, what's the system of distribution? What's the system of production? What's the system of, of contracting? It will be predominantly decided in those three questions. Yeah, and, and I don't is, see anyone else asking, asking, mm. politicizing these issues and making them the, them the core of an alternative analysis. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that it, it is through this perspective that we can actually see the the like the the crypto tokens becoming a real force of social and economic change. It's here, and I think the, the end of the introduction is in fact really strong. Uh, uh, and before, then, mm. before you go there, I just wanted to ask a question because there's this there's this slide of that text that you added just for today, Sally, about where you bring together the distributed computation and the autonom autonomous politics. And so it's kind of a question to everybody really, but just, is it true then that, that a post-capitalist kind of politics needs distributed computation because it makes expressible the kind of yeah. equality equality and equal strength and equal ability to say what you want into the network is that yeah yeah exactly that it's it's true that that it, it starts to resemble an, an like an expressive medium it, it it needs these new capacities yes but on the other hand it, the, the, the the reverse is true too i mean we need to i mean to, to, to unlock really the potentiality of the of the distributed computation, we need a new conception of economy, like a new 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 conception as a network, as a programmable network. So so that's kind of for the I don't know the the the, like the it won't, it intersection won't be, where we work. It won't yeah it won't create. That's why I was interested by this thing that you wrote. Maybe I can just zoom up to it really quick, like mm -hmm. this idea that like that. Distributed computation is has a likeness to autonomous politics. Yeah, is that? Can you yeah. say a little? Because that was like, I was like, oh, and I was wondering also what. Uh, let's see where it is right here. Here we go. Because that I just like kind of locking in that we need distributed computation, but we need like autonomous political economy to kind of. Yeah, oh, autonomous meet, yeah, meet economics, autonomous political economics. Yes, that's the that's the, in fact. Really, the key thing what we are talking, to, I mean, thinking about, like, you can think about on this, like, or distributed communication networks. I mean, there are reasons why internet is distributed. There are security reasons. There are like uh, uh, resil resilience reasons. There are uh, um, like there are reasons for it. But it's mm -hmm. the same thing on the on the economic level too. Uh, the the dis distributedness of the economic system, it has to do with the stability, liquidity of the of the of the system. They're like it's it, it it's the same thing but different features in a sense. And uh, we were in fact just today talking about that with Jorge. And I think it's super interesting uh, um, area, and uh, there's sort of still a lot of work to to cover it. I think so this about. is where you kind of talk about like we can. In this kind of system, it's imaginable to we can make markets with each other, right? We can make markets together, right? For for the things that we yeah. value. Yeah, different kind of markets. Yes, yes. Market making is uh, is is at the core core of autonomous politics, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe just before we go to markets, I mean, I, I think it's also um, what Estelle is saying is even more compelling when we see that computation has a sort of had an autonomous emergence like um, certain kinds of intellectual histories might narrate, but it's actually, you know, developed um, not only in the footprint of capitalist projects, but actually as an extension of, of their capacities, mm. right? So if one thinks about the general intellect, and I'm kind of like channeling variety here, but like the and the alienation of the general intellect, then all this computation is actually species thinking. It's species sedimented species capacity, which in the, in a current in the current structure functions as an alienated form of capacity, which it continues to compound the injustice on which it's founded, 
right? And and so turning around the power of computation and reclaiming the power of computation is also claiming our own species intelligence in a way in order, in order to make it serve some sort of uh, emancipatory project. Um, I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, you asked about autonom autonomism, hmm. we're, we're, you know, Dick said something really interesting about sovereignty and, and fiat currencies and the political yeah. uh, of these funds. These are the questions, right? These are the deeper questions that I think are driving us, right? I mean, it's like, if you're, if you're going to break up sovereignty by having a new sort of system of governance, which is organized by bottom-up economy and economic expression, you're also actually breaking up subjectivity. Right. I mean, and, and individuality the way we normally experience it, because shared stake really means that we're that we're in deep relations of, of kinship with one another, mm -hmm. an extended experience of self, and that we can actually perceive, feel through one another, you know, what it means to be other people with other people. So there's a whole being with uh, which is implied in this uh economic process, which I think is sometimes sort of seen as incidental or esoteric, but it's totally. actually, actually the driving force. Mm. Oh, it's, that's so well said. I, I think it oftentimes it really is essential, and it oftentimes just gets taken as incidental, like you said. Um, uh, Orion has a, a great comment here that I just want to share. Mm. That he talks about that the desire for a certain kind of bottom-up computing economic language says makes him super interested in bridging discourses between this work and areas mm -hmm. of human computer interaction, programming, mm. systems design, and the tools for thought crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. It says that there's so many fascinating crossover points. That seem to be making the same cl claims if you squint, but it's incredibly rare for those niches to ever feel comfortable critiquing capitalism, uh, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that is entrenched as capitalism itself. And and then he makes a point that yeah, this inclusion of economics in it with the computing. And this was also part of our meeting with block science, which was cool. Where I almost felt the edge of the innovation of bringing economics to the information. You know, yeah. like mm. they were, you know, like so that was as a design great. field, as a design field. You know, yeah, mm. yeah, in itself, as, as, it's, as it's an engineering convention. field in itself, you know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool, that's yeah. great. Hey, I, Dick, I, Dick, I want to, yeah, no, go, go on because I, I think we, we're, we're going to get to the same spot. I, I, I know <laughs> exactly. All right, you guys yeah. both say it at once one, okay, two, yeah. three, <laughs> one, two, living three. in the spread, I, yes. I, so, because we were, yeah. I want to make I, it, I know, out I know, know it, you want to get to that, yeah, so, so. And this is the last section of the of, of that paper. But let, let me go back just a tiny bit because um, Jorge asked, I don't know whether the question went to everyone, about what's the importance of who decides what liquidity is. And I just want to start there for just mm. a second. Mm. In, the reason this is a political issue is that we have all come to accept um, that liquidity is defined by the state's money, that the most liquid position to have is cash. Cash is safe. You know, you can't if you can't trust the future, you get out of yield bearing assets, you know, because they might crash and you go to cash and you feel safe. Uh, I could add in there parenthetically a whole lot of stuff about about the bizarre privileging of liquidity that has happened over the last five years through quantitative easing and the state just mm -hmm. throwing trillions, trillions of dollars in, in, into the economy to make financial markets stay liquid. And we would have it's to say that the good. current, yeah. yeah, we'd have to say the current inflation is, is uh, at least partially, partially connected to that. But let's not go there because it, it's, we're running out of time mm -hmm. and that would be, and anyway, if I started ranting there, I maybe couldn't stop. Uh, I'm too interested, I'm too interested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but on, on this issue, you know, the, 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 of the traditional notion that cash is safe, mm. What we're now seeing uh, and we can now imagine is maybe cash isn't safe. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, yeah. and it's not just inflation or, or as Tansel who's here comes from a country, Turkey, where the inflation rate 70% uh, and rising. You, you, you can't automatically say cash is safe. And what's more, going back to an, an issue I raised earlier, we now have the possibility of saying, maybe there's something other than the state's cash that is financial and safe. And that's, that's where sort of crypto challenges to the state's money, while we wouldn't want to overstate them and say, uh, we're backing Bitcoin to become the new money. But, mm -hmm. but things like Bitcoin clearly have moneyness. They have attributes of money. 
And maybe if you don't think, if you think the state's money is unsafe, you don't, you're not trusting the state and its abilities to, to provide uh, a fair and stable financial system, then you want to take a short position on the state. So cash in traditional economics, cash is a short position on yield bearing assets because mm -hmm. it's saying, mm -hmm. I'm not trusting the yield. So I'm going to short the future by holding cash. We're saying, hey, maybe now we need to have a short position on cash because cash could be unsafe and you've got to go somewhere else. And the re realm of crypto <clears throat> becomes that, if not safe in some absolute sense, certainly a different set of risks that you might want to hold. And that's why we get to this idea of saying the domain we're looking at is living in the spread. It's the spread between the safeness of cash defined from the state's point of view, which is the symbol of living inside a capitalist economy. And we're all still living inside a capitalist economy and we're not going to be not living in, in a capitalist economy for the foreseeable future. But on the other hand, having that, that hedge, that put on the state's money and on the capitalist economy by saying, well, we're looking to, to talk about this this other sort of economy that's not dependent on the state's money. But because both are going to be alive at once, we're always in a spread, a spread between the state's money and this alternative financial system that we're building up. So I think it's important to always make clear that when we're talking about designing an economy in crypto, that we're not talking about something that's autarkic and has no connection at all uh, mm -hmm. to a capitalist economy. This will be incredibly porous, which creates deep challenges of design and cheap, 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 uh, deep challenges of ongoing rethinking. But it's a really interesting and I think empowering notion to say there is a spread. Where we situate in the spread, how we manage the spread, that's the politics of all of this, at least the politics expressed financially. Mm. But opening up the possibility, the idea of a spread is itself incredibly empowering. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it may be like a thing I meant to say earlier, which is, which is obvious about this project, is that this is not an academic book. It's a book descriptive of like a project to, that has launched a token, it's going to do a token sale, is, is building technology um, such to actually give the affect of those holding those different assets, right? Holding those different money-like things that actually does the thing you're talking about, Dick. Yeah. Start to, and then that's kind of the proposal to say like, if we find, if people find this convincing and interesting, then the way, the kind of the protocolized way to, to start feeling that way and to making that impact is to have the token, is to participate in the economy rather than doing an older leftist thing of like protest within the economy. You start mm -hmm. to evacuate it. I would just want to add to the to Dick's amazing statement that um, you know the the, the holding one uh, currency over another, um, sort of shorting cash like fiat USD for example, uh, with another currency um, or another, is actually um, also a wager on a community, right? And, and so and so I mean one of the things that's happened with um, the inflation and the crisis with the Fed raising rates, something like that is that all currencies, but the USD or USD have been devalued radically. Why is that? Well, I mean, the mm -hmm. short answer that I, I would give is the US military power and global hegemony, right? And so this is a, in, in uncertain times, the flight to safety is the US dollar because they have more guns, right? And they have more uh, financial hegemony. Even Europe um, and Japan seem like, you know, weak uh, in relationship to US power. So when you hold mass, if you're also making a, it's denominated in a community uh, mm -hmm. and you make a wager on the, on the viability of that community. So crypto provides alternatives, certainly, but among the cryptos, it's like, well, which one? What are the communities that they're creating, right? And I think the interesting thing about the EXA project is it actually has, um, forgive me for saying this, but it has a socialist basis, right? It's actually coming out of an idea of sociality, which is post-capitalist or anti-capitalist in many respects, even though it's interfaced with the capitalist economy very directly. And that spread that EXA opens up is, I'd say, qualitatively different than every other spread out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it is, a, it, it, I mean, it, it's, it's the politics of taking a position in a debate that we think is a a worthy position of in and it has integrity and it's it's 
the best we can come up with at the moment. But but we're looking to see it build, adapt, take on new ideas, uh, some of which we may not even like. But 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 I think that's that's the politics. That's the movement that that we're that we're putting ourselves into. Yeah, and that's what the the reading group group is also about. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Is there, do we want to have some more kind of comments on this last bit or should we stop recording? Should we hear some? Oh, wow, we're already at chapter two. Yeah, I think that's it. That's where we're, that's where we're going. Okay, wonderful. So.